Well, there's only one thing you can do with a dirty blue eddy, and that's to hose it off. Yeah, make sure I get it all in these holes to make sure it gets nice and rinsed out. Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos product review. Blue Eddy has released yet another AC200 series power station that oddly seems to compete with its own most recent release, the AC200L. Despite having a smaller battery, this one is called the AC240. So what's the big deal? Well, the AC240 comes packing some new features not supported in any of their other midsize offerings, such as an inverter parallel ability only found in their flagship products, which means you can hook two together for more power. This also offers direct battery expansion support up to 20 kilowatt hours with their new B10 battery. It also rocks a new app-free interface that lets you change all the settings without needing an app and then turn off all the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And last but not least, IP65 water resistance. It certainly ticks a lot of boxes, but is it any good? Let's find out. Now the battery inside is a 1536 watt hour lithium iron phosphate rated at 3500 cycles to 80% capacity and can be expanded up to a whopping 10 kilowatt hours of capacity or 20 kilowatt hours when in parallel mode using the new IP65 rated B210 expansion battery that we'll check out here in a bit. As for size and weight, it measures a tall 17 by 12 by 16 inches and weighs in at a meaty 72 pounds. Now this is 10 pounds heavier than the AC200L, which actually has a larger battery and same size inverter. So not really sure where it packed on 10 extra pounds, but McDonald's did reintroduce the double Big Mac recently. Hmm. Now as for the display, the AC240 rocks the same high quality color LCD as their other models. And this one shows you everything you could possibly need to know from watts in and out to time to charge and discharge. I counted 29 total pieces of information on the display. Dang. Now as for the inverter, this has the same power inverter as the AC200L or 2400 watts with a brief 3600 watt surge. Of course, they offer their proprietary power lifting feature that claims the power resisted devices up to 3600 watts, but it does this by dropping the voltage of the inverter and I always suggest turning off this feature to prevent damaging your appliances. As for outlets, it does rock the typical TT30R RV output and a pair of 20 amp 120 volt standard outlets. The AC240 can charge via AC wall outlet or grid power using the included cable. It is a proprietary cable with an aviation connector on the end. It can do this up to 2200 watts for charging from zero to 80% in about 45 minutes. However, this product is factory locked to 18 watts and in order to unlock faster charging you do need to get a passcode from support it can of course charge from solar with the built-in 1200 watt mppt controller in a theoretical two hours under perfect conditions however unlike the ac200 l's 145 volt controller this one is limited to a maximum of 60 volts at 21 amps that's right 60 volts that's going to make it quite difficult to hit that magic 1200 watt mark because you need the perfect series parallel combination of panels to reach 60 volts at 21 amps without overvolting. Remember the saying, you can overamp, but you can't overvolt. Overvolting a power station will result in either a shutdown in the best case scenario or smoke in the worst case scenario. We'll get deeper into this situation here in a moment. Now, Blue ID does include the solar charging cable, which is MC4 to their proprietary aviation connector. Last and certainly least, you can charge from 12 or 24 volt source at 8.2 amps, and that's gonna be good for 100 or 200 watts of charging respectively. Now as for 12 volt outputs, Blue Eddy did decide on this model to ditch that fancy new proprietary 48 volt output that they put on the previous model and go back to the very useful 30 amp 12 volt output. And if you wanna use that 30 amp 12 volt output, you will need to get the optional aviation cable to XT60 connector. This allows you to make an Anderson connection to a fuse box or other output from this 30 amp source. There is of course the 10 amp cigarette lighter socket that is good for powering your retro items. As for USB output types, the AC240 does offer a pair of USB-C 100 watt power delivery outputs alongside with a pair of 18 watt USB A quick charge ports. This is standard fare nowadays with most mid sized power stations. Note that Blue Eddy doesn't seem to be offering wireless charging pads anymore on their latest offerings, and this product is no exception. 
I personally do miss the wireless charging pads. Now, as for other features, the AC240 does offer the aforementioned parallel ability where you can use an optional hub to connect two AC240s together. This shares the inverter and battery power between the two units equally and will split the loads. However, this parallel ability has a very important limitation that we'll review in a moment. Now, app haters can rejoice. You no longer need an app to change the major behind the scenes settings in your AC240. You can also opt to disable all wireless access permanently until you decide to turn it back on. The AC240 and B210 battery are rated IP65 dustproof and water resistant. This means dust cannot get inside and you can shoot a quarter inch stream of water at three gallons per minute from any direction into the unit with zero damage done. This is very handy if you need power outdoors in severe weather or on a boat. As for the warranty, Blue Eddy offers a class leading six year warranty for both the AC240 and its B210 battery. And of course we took the AC240 here into my secret laboratory where we performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it, including Yes, let's say it together now, a double-fisted battery capacity test. As for the results of the DC battery capacity test, it scored 1,210 watt hours out of 1536 for 79%. And if you were paying attention during the time lapse, you'll notice that I was using the 30 amp output instead of the standard cigarette lighter. I did this to speed up the testing, thinking that maybe it'll score better if I pull 20 amps instead of eight. It certainly didn't help. The AC200L scored 5% better on this test but it doesn't offer this coveted 30 amp output of the AC240, so the AC200L is just gonna be more efficient at DC. The AC battery capacity test scored 1,270 watt hours out of 1536 for 83%, which is industry average, but nowhere near the 91% scored by the AC200L. I assume these two inverters at 2,400 watts were identical, but they can't be and we'll verify this in a moment. We also did a phantom load parasitic drain test where we determined how much power does this waste with the DC turned on or with the AC turned on. Now for the DC test, we leave it on for 12 hours and for the AC test, we leave it on for four hours. Then we extrapolate how much it's going to use over a 24 hour period. The results of the DC consumption test, it used 177 watt hours over 12 hours or about 354 watt hours over 24 hours. This is on par with other mid-sized power stations and pretty close to what the AC200L scored. As for AC consumption, it used 109 watt hours over four hours or about 654 watt hours over 24 hours. So if you left the inverter on, it would totally kill the battery in just under three days. Now this is literally double the idle consumption of the AC200L, which tells me that these are using two totally different 2400 watt inverters on the same 51 volt battery architecture. Makes no sense to me, but that's what they did. Now I'm always asked how long stuff's gonna run on these power stations. So what we do is compensate for usable capacity and then I make this chart, which will let you know how long certain appliances will run on this unit. Pure sine wave check under load. You can see we're rocking a clean 120 volts at 60 hertz exactly. And here's what the sine wave looks like, nice and clean. And this is under a 2000 watt load. Inverter capacity test. This is where we determine how hard can we push the 2400 watt inverter in the AC240. Let's start at 2400 watts and work our way up. You can watch the sine wave here, which is already starting to lose its tips at 2400 watts. And we'll keep an eye out here too. This still says 120 volt, 60 Hertz, even at its maximum capacity. But let's keep pushing it and see what happens. All right, 2400 watts, let's keep going. 2500, 2600, I'm getting error messages and blinking lights telling me I am overloading the inverter. 2700, 2800, 2900, 3000. Look at the sine wave, that's getting crushed. 3100, 3200 is where it finally shuts down and errors out. You can see it blinks and we get some error messages here on the screen. This next test is the five minute sustained cooling or heat soak test where you run it 
at or above its rated capacity for at least five minutes to make sure it doesn't do anything funky like start smoking or drinking or carrying on calling its mother names or TPing your house or forgetting to take out the trash. That's the most important one. Let's go ahead and push this at 2600 watts and see if it'll go for five minutes. If not, we'll keep backing it down to what does. There we have it, 2600 watts. Clock has started. Let's see if we can make it to five minutes. Okay, it made it two minutes, 20 seconds at 2600 watts. Let's back it down to 2500. Okay, there we are, 2500 watts. The clock has started. Starting to see a trend here. It made it two minutes, 10 seconds at 2500 watts. So let's back it down to 2400 and hope it can do its actual rated capacity. All right, clock has started. We're at 2,400 watts, which is the rated capacity of this inverter. All right, here we are coming up on five minutes at 2,400 watts. It handled it no problem. You can see right here, the sine wave still looks rock solid. Do note that I'm doing all my testing with power lifting off. Power lifting is Blue Eddy's proprietary voltage dropping system that drops the voltage so that you can run more amps. This only works for resistive loads like coffee pots, hot plates, things like that that just generate heat can't use it with anything that has a compressor in it or a computer chip or a motor. So at 2,400 watts, we're six minutes in, still going, no problem. So this can handle its rated capacity, but no more. So what about inverter noise at full capacity? So the fans on this run around 49 to 50 decibels, which is very quiet. It's a pleasant sound. It's not gonna bother most people. This next test is the max charge rate test. This is where we determine how much solar can the AC240 pull. How does it work at 12, 24, 48 volts and its maximum of 60 volts. This has a solar range of 12 to 60 volts and it supports simultaneous charging. Okay, at 12 volts, it's pulling 8.2 amps, which is typical for a Blue Eddy and charges at just over 100 watts. Bump this up to 24 volts, which might be if you're charging from a 24 volt vehicle or using a 24 volt battery to charge this, still holding 8.2 amps at 200 watts. This is typical because up to this voltage, would typically be from a vehicle, so they limit you to eight amps. Okay, now let's take it up to 48 volts, which is the typical 48 volt battery, around 50 volts. And we're going to see how many amps does it pull and what kind of watts do we get out of it. Okay, at 48 volts, it's maxing out this 20 amp charger at 860 watts. So let's go ahead and bump on this other charger I have on top, which will give us another 10 amps at 48 volts. Okay, we're now maxing out at 1,050 watts, which means that's about the limit if you are running 48 volts. That's the maximum you're gonna be able to push into this product. Okay, from this point, I can't use this top charger because it only does 51 volts. So now we're at 60 volts. We're gonna see how many amps and watts we're pulling 18.2 amps and it's maxing at 850 watts. So why is it only capping out at 850 watts? Well, that's because I don't have that second charger. What's weird about this Blue Eddy is they give you a really low voltage for solar. So it's 12 to 60 volts, and that's pretty low for a product of this size. Now, a lot of other Blue Eddies cap around 145 to 150 volts. That means you can put solar panels in series, much lower amps, you can use thinner cabling. Series is almost always the best way to go when you have an MPPT controller like this. Why they limited it to 60 volts is beyond me. It doesn't make any sense because the AC200 and AC200 Max and AC200L, they all support 145 volt solar panels. This Max is out at 60, which means you have to have a lot of amps. This thing will actually take 21 amps, but that's the limit. And it's very difficult to get 1200 watts of solar with 60 volts of solar panels because a lot of times you're gonna run into limitations with the cables because 10 gauge MC4 cable only supports 20 amps. You don't really wanna push anything more than 20 amps into a typical 10 gauge MC4 cable. So in any case, we were able to push 1050 watts into this and I did do the firmware update. I made sure I updated the firmware on this. This thing has been cooled off for at least an hour, so there's no heating that's causing it to slow down. One other thing you need to be aware of, and this is kind of weird, and I've never seen this before on a Blue Eddy product. Now you see here in the app, you have three modes for charging, standard, turbo, and silent. Now these are usually charging modes for AC power, not really solar power. So if you have 1200 watts of solar plugged in, you should be able to charge at 1200 watts no matter what the setting is. Well. This Blue Eddy, I had it set on standard, and I'm like, why is it maxing at 800 watts of solar? I can't push anything more than 800 watts. It was a, it was a hard limit. 
Well, I went and I put it on turbo, and now it allows me to push the full solar wattage into it. So be very aware of that. By default, this comes on standard. So if you try to put 1200 watts of solar into this and you're only getting 800, it's because you have to change the setting to turbo. So be aware of that. It's a weird little quirk, but as long as you're aware of it, it's not a problem. Another quirk you need to be aware of is that this only accepts 1200 watts of solar if you can get your solar panels up to 60 volts. That's notoriously difficult to do. Now, I looked at their product line and I figured out where they pulled the solar controller from. It's basically from the AC180. So they took the solar controller from the AC180 and slapped it in here. It has that 60 volt limit, which is very strange. It should have just taken the one out of the AC200L and put it in here. And these are all things I need to report to you as the customer because that's what I do. So what about AC wall charging? You have those three modes, silent, standard and turbo it's currently in turbo let's see how fast it charges from grid power and there you have it it charges at a maximum of 755 watts from the grid now what's pretty awesome is that this thing's barely making any noise while charging from the wall so let's see how many decibels from a meter away 43 decibels, whisper quiet. So it's not gonna bother you whatsoever when you're charging it from the grid. So let's now go into the app and change it to standard mode and see how much slower it charges. All right, so in standard mode, it drops it all the way down to 800 watts. Let's try silent mode. Silent mode made no difference whatsoever. And just to show you, I'm not making this up. It's on silent, it's only doing 800 watts. Let's change it to standard. Okay, we changed it to standard, no difference. So that's kind of fascinating because standard and silent mode don't seem to have any difference whatsoever. They charge at 800 watts, the fan is still running. Now the fan is very, very quiet. I probably can't even pick it up on the sound decibel meter, but there's no difference between silent and standard. So what's the point of those two settings that they shouldn't even offer silent? You would think silent would be like 400 watts and that would bring the charging way down. But who knows? I just need to report whatever I find. One other mention is that when you're charging this exclusively from solar at its max rate, it's not making any noise, so it's actually pretty much silent. So that's a nice touch. So what about simultaneous charging? So right now we're charging from both solar and grid. Solar is around 1,000 watts and grid is around 1,150 watts. So this is basically around 2,200 watts. It does say here in the manual 2400 watts is the maximum. This next test is the UPS test, the most controversial test that I ever do on my channel. And I made a big change. Instead of using my laptop without a battery in it, I went out and I purchased a PC with monitor so I can do this test from now on with an actual PC because a lot of people complain that since I was using a laptop without a battery, they don't feel it's equivalent to running a PC. So we're gonna go ahead and nip that problem in the bud from this point forward. Now I'm gonna do actually a separate review on this PC. It's in fact one of the cheapest computers you can buy. So what I have here is I have the grid hooked up through this box. You see the red light on here. The grid is going into the Blue Eddy. The Blue Eddy is then powering this computer from its inverter. So when I flip this red switch, it's gonna cut off grid power. We're gonna see does the Blue Eddy inverter switch fast enough to keep this computer online? Now, I know you can't see the monitor, but I'll go ahead and scroll up so you guys can see. There it is in uh, Windows 10 in all its full glory. Let's go ahead and find out. Place your bets. Is this going to pass the test? Now, Blue Eddy claims this is a 15 millisecond switching time. So, that's pretty fast. That should be plenty to keep this online. Let's find out. Three, two, one. And yes, of course, it is still online. It did stop the charging of the battery. Let's go ahead and turn it back on, make sure there is no reverse issue with the power coming back on, which there almost never is, but we gotta test it anyway. And there it is, back to grid charging the battery while powering the computer at the same time. So yes, I'm doing this under load and at 67% battery. Okay, so this passes the UPS test, no problem. DC output test. We're plugging into the 12 volt cigarette lighter, which you can see is actually regulated at 13.6 volts. And there you have it, 10 amps. It actually still holds 12.8, 12.9 volts, no problem. So this right here next to the cigarette lighter socket is a 30 amp 12 volt output. So you can hook this into a fuse box or whatever you wanna do. You can pull up to 360 watts out of this port. Now I did this separately because I was doing a time lapse where I was using this port because it's Basically, I can pull more power out of this 
and it lets me do the time lapse faster. So during that test, I decided to go ahead and pre-record. You'll see right here, I was able to pull 360 watts, no problem. That means the 12 volt section of this works perfectly fine. USB test, we wanna make sure that Blue A is doing what it says it's supposed to do. This has two 100 watt USB-C power delivery outputs. So I have two power bands hooked up to these two 100 watt outputs, and it is actually charging both of them at 100 watts each. Getting about 92 there, 92 there, total of just over 200 watts of USB charging. Amp interference test. Is the inverter in the AC240 clean or dirty? Place your bets. Three, two, one. Sounds pretty darn clean to me. So this passes the amp interference test. This means this product is good for running musical amps, PA systems, ham radios, anything that might have an amplifier or something you might need to wear headphones for, shouldn't have that annoying buzz come through like on some other power stations. Radio interference test. Does the inverter or any other circuits in here give off a lot of electromagnetic radiation that causes interference in the AM band? So the machine is on, you're not noticing any difference. So there you have it. What about electromagnetic interference? I do have a meter here and I will run it across this as I turn on the button and you can watch the results. So it's kind of normal right here. Let's turn this on. Okay, it goes up. Now this is the EM bar and this is the EMF bar. So you can see it's not too bad right there. 20, no problem, 20, 30. Let's put on the inverter. We're going up there on 80. USB does cause some interference as well. And back down to normal. There's a feature mentioned in the user manual for the AC240 that a lot of you are gonna really like. And that's the fact that you no longer need an app on your phone to change the hidden settings inside. Now, in the past, they got around this by having a touch screen, so you can go through all the touch screen settings and you didn't need Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. However, if you're one of those people that hates Wi-Fi or Bluetooth in your power station, say it causes interference with something that you're doing, or you're just completely paranoid and you're worried that someone's going to hack into your Blue Eddy, there's now a way to go in and turn those off and then program everything in your Blue Eddy manually by pushing buttons. Now this is pretty cool. Let me show you how it works. Okay, here's how you get into the secret menu for the AC240. Make sure it's turned on, nothing else can be plugged in. No solar, no grid power. Hold down DC and AC simultaneously and you'll see this new screen pop up. P01, this is the selection, so we're on selection one you'll see 60 is blinking, this and it says Hertz. So that's 60 Hertz. If you wanted to change the inverter to 50 Hertz, if you were in a different country, you could change it to 50 by pressing the AC button. AC button changes the setting, DC button takes you through to the next setting. So let's leave it on 60 since we're in America. DC takes you to P03, so we're on setting three. And you'll see here, you've got a little moon with Zs, and then you have a shield with a lightning bolt in it. It's allowing you to select silent mode or turbo mode. So if I wanted to, for example, lock in silent mode, I pick the little moon with the Zs, and I just leave it on there. If I want turbo mode, I hit the AC button again, and it shows a little shield with a lightning bolt. If I want neither, and I just want standard mode, I hit it at AC again, both of those disappear. So we hit DC again for the next setting, which is setting four, and that is power lifting mode. We hate power lifting mode, we're gonna leave that off. Setting five is eco mode. That allows you to turn eco mode on and off. Again, from the power station, you don't even need the app. Setting six is turning off Bluetooth. So if you wanna actually disable Bluetooth, you hit AC, it turns Bluetooth transmitter off, and then you can hit P7, that's Wi-Fi. You hit AC, it turns off that Wi-Fi transmitter forever. And then what you do is you go back to P1, hold down both buttons at the same time, 
It saves your settings, and now the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are permanently disabled until I go back in and tell it I want it to be turned back on. And since I do use it, I use the app all the time, I'm gonna go ahead and go back in to setting six, turn the Bluetooth back on, setting seven, turn the Wi-Fi back on, go back to P1, hold these two, and it saves the setting. So now you know how to get into the Bluetti secret menu, and that's all explained here in the user manual. As part of the AC240 release, they're also releasing the B210 portable battery. So this battery can be used with several power stations, not just the AC240. Now I don't have that list in the top of my head, but you can go to the Bluetti website, look up B210, it'll tell you what power stations this is compatible with. So this is just like a lot of the other Blue Eddy batteries. However, this one is 2160 watt hours. So it's got plenty of power packed in this little tiny package. So what's cool about Blue Eddy batteries is it's more than just the battery. It actually has inputs and outputs on it. It doesn't require the power station to be used. And I'll prove that to you. You can turn it on and then you get five lights. Tell me how many lights you see. Yeah. Oh! You can turn on DC separately, so you can use this as a DC power source. It does have a 100 watt USB-C port and a 18 watt USB-A port, a 12 volt 10 amp cigarette lighter socket, of course. This left side has the battery hookups on it. So this is how you hook it to other batteries or hook it to the power station. And then this side actually has its own solar input. So yes, you can charge this battery with solar from 12 to 60 volts up to 500 watts. That's pretty cool. And then there's this bleed valve, which they don't say what it's for. But I took this bleed valve off and I blew in there and it is pressurized. So what I mean is it's like airtight inside. So for some reason they have a airtight compartment in there. Maybe that's where the electronics are and that's what makes this water resistant. I don't know. Like I said, it's not explained in the, either one of the user manuals. So I have no idea what the bleed valve is for. Now this battery is fully charged and this one is at 66%. So let's see what happens when we hook up a fully charged battery to one that's only two thirds charged. Now, in order to hook these batteries up, of course, you need to have them turned off first. Now Bloody does have this new cabling system. They still haven't got the memo that people want 90 degree bends on these cables. They don't want them sticking out like giant horseshoes from their power stations. Why can't they put 90 degree bends on these? I have no idea. There are a few competitors that do have 90 degree bends in their cables. But what's nice about these cables, these are much better than the old Blue Eddy cables because you just snap in and then to, to take them off, you just turn this little ring, like just a tiny bit, and then you can pull them out. Now they're color coded, so you can't get them messed up. We now have the battery cable plugged in. You can push the power button on either and they will both turn on. So you see this turns on first. Now this turns on and will be detected. Watch the display. It goes from 66% and then when it detects the battery, it changes to 85%. So it means that Blue Eddy recalculates depending on how many batteries you have in your system. So the maximum limit of batteries on the AC240 is four of these. So you can have up to four of these batteries. Now remember, these are 2150 watt hours a piece. So four of those plus the 1536 watt hours in there gives you like 10 kilowatt hours. That's a lot of power for a little power station like this. No, you're not seeing double. There are actually two AC240s on my bench and there is a very good reason for this. That's because this model Blue Eddy has a special trick up its sleeve. And this is gonna make it the smallest Blue Eddy ever that can do this. And that is, yes, you can actually run your 50 amp or 30 amp RV with two of these Blue Eddies and this magic box. Now this magic box is an optional purchase. And I saw this claspy thing on the back. I'm like, what's this supposed to clip onto? And then I kind of looked at the handle and I'm like, ah, oh, that's pretty cool. That's a unique way to mount it. You just, you just clip it onto the handle and there you go. You have a way to plug in and it's pretty solid. I mean, it's good enough, right? And you have these waterproof switches in here. So for the 50 amp and 30 amp, you can switch them off and on independently. They are circuit breakers. So pretty cool. Now, all you gotta do 
is hook these up to the AC parallel port, which is this top port here on the side of both of your Blue Eddies. And like I said before, these, they just snap right in. So this is a very quick setup. This isn't gonna take you very long at all. You just plug these in and it automatically will sync the inverters with this box. Now you do have to turn them on independently because these don't communicate with each other except for the inverter. So what I'm gonna do, I also have a new toy for testing 240 volt systems because I didn't have any portable 240 volt appliance, so I bought one. I got this portable 240 volt air compressor and I got this adapter which will allow me to go from the cable to a standard 50 amp RV hookup, which is 240 volts. There we go. Do is flip on the 50 amp breaker. We got power. Let's turn on that compressor. Turn on the switch. Still nothing. All right, let's take a break. One eternity later. Fast forward 36 hours later and here we are. Now what happened in all that period of time? Well, where we left off, I was trying to power my 240 volt air compressor with this hub system that works with the AC240. Because my understanding was when you take two of these and you combine them together and you use one of these kind of hubs, what you come out with is on this side was supposed to be a 240 volt 50 amp RV hookup because these outlets are always 50 amps, 240 volts. And this side is 30 amps, 120 volts. Now that is, if you were in an RV park, you would assume that's 50 amps, 240. This is 30 amps, 120. Very simple. So that's what I assumed and I assumed incorrectly. Now first you have to understand when I received this product, I did get a couple of user manuals with it, but there was no website. There was no other information besides what's in those books. And now the website's up, it clearly states that this product is 120 volts only. So this typical 240 volt 50 amp outlet is actually 120 volts. Every other product that does this has 240 volt output, not the AC240. This is only 120 volts. So even though this looks like a 240 volt 50 amp outlet, it's actually a 120 volt 40 amp outlet. And this is a 120 volt 30 amp outlet. So there is no 240 volts available whatsoever for the system, no matter how you configure it, how you parallel it, there's no 240 volts. So I want this to be extremely clear to anybody purchasing this product. This is not designed for 240 volt operation. If you need split phase 240 volts, you have to go with Blue Eddy's larger offerings, the AC300 or AC500. Those when combined with a box like this actually has 240 volts. Apparently they told me that they had a lot of customers complaining on the AC300 that they can only pull 3000 watts at 120 volts. They wanted a way to pull way more than that at 120 volts. So they came out with this solution, which will pull 4,800 watts when you combine two into this outlet. Now, if your motorhome has a 50 amp hookup and it only uses 120 volt appliances, you've got a 120 volt air conditioner, 120 volt furnace, 120 volt, all that other stuff, then you could use this, it won't be an issue. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna create two 120 volt circuits inside of your circuit breaker box. So you would normally have 120 on one side, 120 on the other, and when you combine those, it's 240. The way this works, you have 120 on the one side, 120 on the other, and if you combine them, it's zero volts. So you can't use anything that combines the two 120s to make 240. Just wanna make this clear, I know I spent a lot of time on it. I don't want you to think you can power 240 volt well pumps or 240 volt mini splits or 240 volt furnaces or anything that's 240 volts. So just letting you know, that's the limitation of this product when you combine two together with this hub device. So what do I think about the AC240? Well, I think this is another fine product from Blue Eddy, a brand that releases more new products each year than most hobos change their underwear present company excluded, of course. The new parallel ability is very cool, along with the ability to store up to 20 kilowatt hours of power if you max out the battery capacity on two of these put together using eight of those B210 batteries. Now I do like those new B210 batteries. They have managed to squeeze another 100 watt hours more power than the B230 for only one extra inch of space. However, just like the AC240, it's quite a bit heavier. 
like 14 more pounds heavier than the B230. So this doesn't really make sense to me. Does IP65 water resistance really create so much more heft? I suppose that with the waterproof chambers and this mysterious bleed valve that's on the side, maybe it can. Is the extra size and weight worth it? I'll leave that up to you. Now, one thing I know that App Hager's will adore is the ability to change all the major settings and totally disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I was literally just asked this question a week ago if such a modern power station exists where you can turn off the wireless. Now it does. Now where the AC240 falls flat on its face, in my opinion, is that limited solar charging voltage. It maxes out at only 60 volts, compared to the rest of the 200 series, 145 volts. Maybe Blue Eddy was trying to reduce the heat inside of the sealed up case. Because of this limit though, those that charge with big panels are likely to choose one of the other Blue Eddy models that have that 145 volt option. The AC240 does shine when it comes to upgradability. So if you really need 4,800 watts of power in a portable package, this is definitely gonna be the way to go. Two of these units can be easily placed in just about any vehicle and with a true 30 amp RV outlet available, you can power a ton of stuff at 120 volts. Just be aware of that limitation. The 50 amp RV outlet on the hub does not output 240 volts. I did write to the CEO of Blue Eddy with my complaint and a dire warning that offering a 240 volt NEMA 1450R outlet that only outputs 120 volts is gonna get them put on the chopping block with some customers. I'm hoping that they will update this product or the hub to output split phase 240 volts as it would be a simple process of running both inverters in opposite phase with each other instead of in the same phase. Product price, the AC240 lists at $13.99 on Blue Eddy's website, which happens to be the exact same price as the AC200L Go figure. However, I do have a discount code in the description of this video that will knock a hundred bucks off the AC240 for a limited time until April 29th. Now, what about solar? You can use a pair of Blue Eddy's PV420s in parallel and charge with a solid 800 watts with no issues, or go for four of their PV200s in a series parallel configuration for the same effect. The PV420 is actually my go-to choice for a portable panel when I'm camping, and I've beat the tar out of mine for about two years now with zero issues. If you're looking for something that's more permanent than a folding panel, check out my list at gohobo.io slash solar for ideas. So if you're interested in the AC240, I am gonna put a link below in the description of this video. I'm also gonna put a link here at the bottom of the screen along with a QR code that you can scan if you're watching me on TV that'll take you on over to the Blue Eddy store page where you can check out the AC240 and B210 battery. Don't forget to use my promo code that is in the description of this video to knock a hundred bucks off and it's only gonna be good for a limited time. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. Yeah, you see there's some fans in here. I'll wash those off. There's a heat sink in there. Can you see that? We need to wash that off too. It's actually gonna be dirty. Well, looks like it's working no problem. They did say you can actually spray water in these outlets, but you just wanna make sure they dry before you plug anything into them. So yeah, this is just like the AC60. It is IP65 water resistant. What's the best way to dry off your Blue Eddy after it's been out in the snow? The solar degenerator. Just to prove to you that it still works perfectly fine, we can actually use this if we're careful, and not melt anything, to dry it off. RV Golf Guy, Brian Bloopers, Johnson, Jason Soroka, August 2000.